Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spoiler Warning Podcast. This is review number 598 with a review of Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. I'm Christopher Schneezy. And I'm Stephen Miller. If you're joining us for the first time, the Spore the Warning Podcast is a weekly film review program. Each week in the show, we're going to dive in, debate, discuss, and argue over the latest film releases coming to a streaming platform near you. Stephen, we're now like week four, three, whatever of quarantine. How, how you holding up? I am... I am currently exactly on my one month anniversary of being quarantined. This very night. No, sorry, four week anniversary. Months don't necessarily have exactly four weeks. <laughs> this very <laughs> night, four weeks ago. Why split hairs, Stephen? I know, I know, I know. But especially because the month February did have exactly four weeks. So I'm counting it. I'm counting it. Anyway, this night, four weeks ago, <laughs> we. Um, we had just recorded our very last, like, real in-person spoiler warning episode. And right about now, I would have been getting home. And I would not leave that home ever, ever, ever again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've, you've made small strolls outside now, right? I know I have, yeah. I walked, I walked a dog once. That felt, that felt really nice. And I did do a little excursion to get a chair from the office. That was very exciting. Um, I finally got to see what you were talking about, about this side of the city feeling like a ghost town, but not... Yeah. It's a weird thing where it feels like a ghost town, but not enough of a ghost town. It's like this awkward in-between where like things are empty, you know something is wrong, but then every five blocks you'll just pass like a cluster of people and you'll be like, did they get the memo like what what's their story <laughs> it, it's a weird yeah. awkward like in between between like apocalyptic and then little clusters of people who seem to feel completely normal so that was exciting but anyway i'm I'm doing fine at home how are you doing i'm, I'm doing all right i mean it, it's it is it is a strange thing because if, if you were to take a random sampling of any moment in time in any given day at any given hour i'm probably seated at my computer desk um, doing something um, so it's like if you were just to t- take these little random samplings it would feel like it's any other night before a pandemic existed yeah but then when you factor in all these moments together and you realize that no oh, that's the only choice i have there's nothing else i can do this different um it definitely it definitely feels weird so it's like there'll be moments where you wake up and you forget what's going on and then you realize that like oh shit i need to go grocery shopping and then you're like aha i remember yeah. let me suit up with my my gear before i go out um i I do have to say though there's definitely a perk of waking up and being able to be at work within like 20 minutes (laughs) that's a that's a kind (laughs) of nice feeling i feel like i've shaved i've added an hour of sleep every night just because i no longer have to factor in like fully getting ready and mentally really waking myself up and then walking you know a half hour plus to the office yeah I've definitely my, my my rule for for trying to be in the right mindset is that I have to have an actual shirt. I have mm-hmm. to be showered. I have to be presentable from the waist up. Yep. <laughs> and I have to have shoes on. Um, shoes that makes me wow. feel like it's shoes. It's, it's I have business not been wearing time. shoes. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, I have. Well, I mean, I've also been trying to stand um, during work hours. So it's mm-hmm. like if I don't have the shoes, my feet just die after standing barefoot on a hardwood floor how many times have i put on shoes during this quarantine period let's see i've when i take out the garbage i put on shoes so that's like i I thought i thought this was your chance to call back to never rarely sometimes or always (laughs) nope not 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 going there um (laughs) it was an actual question (laughs) i do i do put on shoes when i i've done a few indoor exercises and the first time I did that, I did it barefoot. And then I realized people wear shoes for a reason. <laughs> There's like, <laughs> you can really hurt your foot doing like jogging or jumping jacks or things like that without anything to cushion the blow. So, yeah. but I'm impressed. I'm, I've remarked in our scrum meetings and everything that I'm always impressed with the willpower for you to put on like a real shirt every day. Most people are kind of in t-shirt or something stretchy or whatever, but it, it feels like you fully get ready in the morning. Yeah. It's any everything visible on camera is fully res- ready, ready for business. Mm-hmm. Um, everything below is just basketball shorts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you keep hinting that you're not wearing pants. I can't tell if that's true or not. <laughs> oh man! For me, pants were a big breakthrough because for the first two weeks, I was sweatpants all the time, or like the same pair of pajama pants for like four or five days in a row. Yeah, I realized like just 
because the only reason I would normally want to wear jeans is to put things in my pockets. Like, that's a, a reason to have real pants on. Yeah. And I realized even without things in my pockets, just, like, the act of putting them on makes me feel a little bit more like a person who is at work again. So I've been, I've been living that pant life. For me, waist up doesn't matter, but <laughs> waist down is, <laughs> just has to be perfect. Well, I mean, I, I see where you're going there with that, because, I mean, as men... When we're eating lunch, we need to be able to wipe our hands on yep. our jeans. Oh, yeah. But of you course. can't do that with sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. It, it's true. It's a real problem. And also, there were times early in the. Because I use the term sweatpant loosely. Like, I, I was using like athletic pants, including one pair that were. They were pants I was sweating in. <laughs> <laughs> there was one pair that was definitely a little tighter than I would have normally worn around anyone. And I like went and got up to walk away. And I had this realization of, oh, everyone can see my full body right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, on that note, <laughs> what do you say uh, we get into this uh, this film? Let's do it. We're going to take a listen to the trailer for Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always, and then we're going to come back and give you a review. I didn't see you at school today. I went to the doctor. What's wrong? Girl problems. Don't you ever just wish you were a dude? All the time. This is the most magical sound you will ever hear. She's not ready to be a mom. Where else could you go? Nowhere in Pennsylvania. I think you should try another place. You going to New York? What are you doing there? Seeing family and stuff. Who came with you today? My cousin. Do you have a place to stay tonight? I know you came from far away. I'll figure it out. This here is closed. Can I sleep here? Where's the rest of the money? La, 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 la. I want to make sure that you're safe. La, 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 la. I know this is hard. you some questions they can be really personal just answer either never rarely sometimes or always all right so that was the trailer for never rarely sometimes always and is the story of a young girl who is a minor and is seeking to have an abortion. Um, but unfortunately, living in Pennsylvania, she can't do that. So she makes her way uh, to New York to try to get that done. And it's sort of the story of this journey that she goes on um, to hopefully get this procedure done. Stephen Miller, what did you think of Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always? So it's hard to really summarize what i think concisely because this is not a pleasant movie right <laughs> this is definitely not a a feel good movie the sort of indie drama where you like you're you're going on a journey with this character and therefore you feel like highs and lows and you get like broad swells of emotions this is kind of a movie that is very direct and naturalistic and is like what would happen if you were a 17-year-old girl who lived in a place where abortion was not legal without a parental guardian and you needed to get an abortion? And it 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 sticks to that bare-bones style in a way that I I really admire, but it's also in a way that would not make me want to watch it a second time. Um, so the things that I... like, There's a lot that I really like about this movie. I... I really like the filmmaking aesthetic. It has this kind of like, I get Sofia Coppola vibes mixed with kind of mumblecore. Like, you know, it, it's very, feels very intimate and low budget. And like, you know, it was shot on location. You, you can just immediately tell they are walking around areas and absolutely they are just walking around New York and probably most of the people being filmed either don't know that they are extras or like 
the whole filming process took like a couple hours or something in that area. There, like, it, th- there's actually one scene where the girls are exiting a subway, yeah, and there's a man in a full suit and a hat who starts to walk up the stairwell and then turns the other direction. And it feels like he just noticed there was a camera and was like, oh, I got to get out of here. Right, right. Like they they were like, well, I don't want to be on camera anymore. Yeah. Like I, I think this had a really good intimate style that really, it feels weird to compare this movie to kind of happy, romantic-y types of movies. But when they're in New York, there's definitely a, a tonal element that feels like those, like Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, like, like movies that are about like, people staying up all night in the passage of time in a way that is very slowed down and kind of experiential. I, I got vibes like that. I'm going to compare it to a movie I've never even seen that I wanted to see ever <laughs> since like college, which was called In Search of a Midnight Kiss, which was kind of like a very low-budget, muted movie about two people trying to connect on New Year's Eve that just like the, the trailer alone reminded me of what this movie made me think. Um, it's but the, then around... the story of the, that boy they meet up with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, but around that, though, this is really a kind of, I don't want to say it's a heartbreaking tale so much as a, a very sad, realistic tale about all of the hurdles that are in someone's place in a desire to make their own decision about their future. Um, and there were some moments in this film where I felt like it was veering a little into the territory we described when we discussed Lion about how the movie Lion was kind of a a cautionary tale that used the life of one person to show the type of things that could happen to many people, right? Um, so in in this movie, there is a creepy guy at a supermarket. There's a, a abortion clinic that she goes to that is very clearly not not abortion clinic, a family planning clinic that is clearly very anti-abortion in a very direct way. There's a creep on the subway there's a creepy person on a train there it, it it started to feel like this was going to be a a pile on of all of the terrible things that could happen to one person which would put it much more in line with the movie that i'm sure everyone is comparing it to which is four months three weeks two days which is this romanian film about a girl that needs to get an abortion and all the harrowing things that happen on her way to do that um I'm happy to say this movie does not go into all the dark places that that other movie did. It kind of, <laughs> it, it, this movie hints at the fear of the things that can go wrong, but basically from the time they arrive to New York till the end, this is a very direct, understated telling of how the logistics would work, right? Like there are long scenes at Planned Parenthood where she's simply being read the list of questions that a real person would be read in that situation we find the bureaucracy at play of you can't go here for this procedure you have to go there but it's not open anymore so you have to go back tomorrow oh but it's a two-day procedure so you have to come back the next day and the all the little things that you normally wouldn't think of that um then make this act so hard for people who are trying to keep a low profile and not potentially blow up their life over it um so I, I was happy with where it landed in the end. I enjoyed the the muted, kind of understated nature of it. And I'm glad it didn't go for the big, heavy tragedies that I felt like were always kind of like hanging in the periphery as they spend their night on the New York City subway or as they struggle to find a way to buy a ticket home, things like that. There are, there are lots of very melodramatic things the movie could have done that it thankfully, for the most part, avoided doing. Um and yeah, I kind of loved it for that. And I think a lot of it has to do with the lead actress, who has never been in anything before, as far as I can tell, Sydney Flanagan. Um, she just felt like a very fully realized character. I feel like I knew this girl growing up. I knew this exact like combination of personalities where she she isn't that open with her emotions. She's kind of like very reserved, and you can tell she has been through some shit, but she is not trying to put it on other people she's just trying to kind of like live her life but she she conveys this kind of roller coaster of sometimes she's really taking charge and knowing what to do and other times she's kind of clamming up and you feel that her friend has to basically drag her around and be the adult in the situation who is making her go the extra mile to you know commit to her plans so it, I, there was just a lot of specificity there that i that i really enjoyed but it is definitely a sad 
melancholy movie that I think you need to be prepared for when you watch. It it isn't the kind of heartfelt thing that you're going to want to throw on again and again and like tear up to. This is more a very direct kind of brutal telling of the the hoops that people have to jump through to take control of their family and their future. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what is like what is great about this film is that uh, it's the way that this is not the story of what has happened to her before this moment. It's not the story of what's going to happen to her after this moment. It's just this simple journey of I am currently in this state in my life. This is the decision I have made. These are the obstacles standing in my way. And this is how I will try to sludge through all those obstacles. And it's not a... It's not an over dramatically telling of who the boy, who the father is. It's not a, uh, a telling of like why she needs to do one thing instead of another thing. It's it's just, hey, this is the current state of things. Many people find themselves in this state with the same motivations, and this is what it'll take to have this procedure done. And live in this process for anybody who is not currently going through this and doesn't spend every waking moment thinking about it. And I think that this film does an incredible job of taking you through her head in each given moment and her simple, like, I just want to go do this thing. And at every single check where she has to then wait and do something else, you, you just, you feel her presence of mind and like her trying to decide what the next step is and how she's going to, gonna deal with that next situation um like as you said there, there's a moment where she's told she'll have to come back the following day for the second half of the procedure and people offer her solutions to the next problem yeah. and she's just not even interested in dealing with that piece because she just wants to get out of that chair and wants to be gone right. from that situation and she she's she's not like it's not about how do I get through this? It's just a, like, okay, the only thing I hear is what the next step is. So I'll figure out the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and I think that that, that, that elevates this film and gives it a more powerful um, sort of, I don't want to say message, but like it gives it a more, a more powerful like essence than it would if you were trying to do this. I mean, it's, it's much like the way that we praised uh, The Way Back, where yeah. it's like, this is not a story about what happened to him before he was an alcoholic. It's just him dealing with being an alcoholic. And this film is not a story about like, hey, we're not going to give you a chance to think about how she got to the current state of things. We're just going to deal with where she goes from here and how people can or can't help her on that journey. Yeah, um, so, like, yeah so I, I, like I, The Way Back, there is one very kind of heartbreaking exchange that happens toward the middle of this movie that does let you see just enough of how she got there without yeah, yeah. beating you over the head with it. I thought that was just perfectly, perfectly done. Yeah. Yeah. That was a really beautiful scene. Um, I mean, beautifully tragic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I yeah. So I, I, overall I, I found this, this film pretty great. Um, at the very, very beginning of the film, I was sort of kind of like, oh, come on, is every single male character in the entire world like the worst piece of shit on the planet? Um, and like, I get it <laughs> because I'm sure at this point in time, that's the way she feels in the situation that she's going through. But it felt like it was coming on a little strong, um, yeah. not not in the fact that all these men were terrible, but the levels to which they were just creepy felt not real to me um but but i got over that pretty quickly as it sort of slid into place and i think that the last male character they interact with is 100 percent authentic and feels oh, very very yeah, real absolutely 100 percent. did you recognize him from boy erased by the way uh, i i knew he was from something but i i couldn't i couldn't place it <laughs> yeah i i do i do think that i i mean that that was a similar kind of progression that i felt too where as the film opens, it starts to feel like the trappings of just a cautionary tale, you know? But then the the further along it gets, the more it eases into a very realistic thing. Like, even... There, there is a person on a subway here that that doesn't... That, that I a thousand percent believe that, right? That in, in those kind of situations, <laughs> it is more... It's talking about a real logistic challenge that I had never considered before, which is what do people do who are in the city and don't have any money and are suddenly told that they have to wait a day to do something like where yeah. can they safely go? And that 
it, it kind of blew my mind in a similar way to the way Lion really made me think about certain tragedies that can happen that I had just never even considered before for like what life for an individual is like. Yeah. Yeah. So I had, um, I had similar feelings. One, I've been wondering if this movie could rightly be called a message movie. I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I think, I think this does a really beautiful job of very naturally depicting, like you said, this exact moment in her life. It isn't focused on the past. It isn't focused on the future. Even the dark or scary elements that happen, I think they are more about how she feels and how you would feel if you were 17 suddenly having to deal with this than it is about the, you know, some grand statement about the way the world works. But I do think the shots of this film in Planned Parenthood, and in particular the interactions she has with the women who are asking her questions, there's one woman in particular who she sees a couple times who is like, I I have to imagine they genuinely just went to Planned Parenthood and asked a person, can I film you doing what you normally would do in your life? Because it felt so completely authentic, like just the step-by-step -step way that questions progress and the the way they've learned how to probe just enough to check if someone is okay, but never too much to be threatening and know when to let go, even if even if the answers aren't satisfying, you know, where are you going to sleep tonight? How are you going to pay for this? It's just like just enough and then easing off. And for me, this movie did accomplish what a message movie should accomplish, which is I walked away from this movie with so much more direct respect for the way that these organizations try to help, you know, especially young women who are in need. Um, yeah. I mean, like we can get real for a second. I, I grew up very conservative, very Christian. I grew up pro-life basically by default. I can't, I can't say I had really even considered it beyond that just being the, the thing that I knew I was definitely supposed to believe. And when I went off to college and I started to, shift leftward a little bit that was one of those things that i thought i could like keep a middle ground of of like well i think it should be legal but heavily regulated and heavily restricted and only very very early maybe only plan b you know no more than x weeks and like of course i my view has shifted since then it isn't like this movie was the first thing that made me think about it but this movie just <laughs> hammers home the the impossibility of holding that middle ground, I think. The idea that this is a choice that women should be able to make, but not after, you know, more than eight weeks or not without a guardian there or not without this or that. Because when you look at her life, she is doing everything she can to make this decision, you know, even without money, without a real way to do it. She's trying to make this call. And I think this movie just does a really good job of showing like all the hurdles and things that people put in the way to try to make this harder, to try to make it more challenging and bureaucratic is I, to me, it just like drove home the wrongness of sitting on the fence or trying to have a, a technique that like a, a law that gives lip service to the idea that girls should be allowed to make this decision, but then isn't willing to actually follow through by making it at all easy or doable. Um, yeah. So yeah, this, this movie really just gave me a lot of respect for organizations like the woman in Planned Parenthood. When she talks about like, we have private funds that can help. We have volunteers who can help with this. I was just kind of like, I, I was overwhelmed by a feeling of, I'm so glad this exists, even if she isn't going to take it. And also, I'm so angry that this has to be like a random private institution that happens to be just one location that is allowing it. So it yeah. it did make me think about it more than I think as a as a guy, especially. I'm not that used to putting myself in those shoes and really imagining how it would feel to go through that. Yeah, so yeah. as a message movie, even if this didn't want to be a message movie, for me, it totally worked, you know, yeah. amazingly well to make me start thinking about these a little more directly. Yeah, and, and one of the things it does too is like, one of the flaws of these laws that people are trying to put in place to to prevent women from being able to have abortions, um, one of the flaws in those those laws is that they, they think that if we put this law into place, that it magically stops anything from ever happening. And every single person who 
who chooses to do this is going to go like, well, I mean, I guess that's it. And they'll just quit and change their mind. But this film also touches a little bit about the thought process that goes through when you think you can't have it done, how that's not going to stop you from trying all sorts of home remedies and doing different things like that. And I think that that when you watch somebody like sit and Google uh, home abortions or whatever, whatever the term was like that, Mm -hmm. as soon as you see somebody do that, you're like, get this person out of there. (laughs) Like, I don't want any of this because whatever's about to happen has to be way worse than anything else that can come about from actually having the procedure for real. Um, So it it is interesting too, to like look at those kind of sides and um, you know, there's no way anybody's going to watch this film and change their mind about anything, but but it definitely is a good journey to go on to live through these shoes if it's not something that you have considered yourself to care about in the past. Yeah. Yeah, like I I think it at least it forces you to understand the ramifications of of different laws and different roadblocks that are put in place like i i agree with you i don't think it will change anyone's mind but it at least i think it forces it to a logical conclusion of if you are putting these rules in place this is what it means for a person of a certain age a person whose parents are not particularly trustworthy you know a person who lives in a town that is not going to give her clear advice and information but it it just makes you kind of walk through those steps in a way that i found very like empathetic and thoughtful without beating you over the head with it like there's so much direct kind of raw experiential stuff here that is not only about the the difficulty of getting an abortion you know there are long stretches of this movie where she and her friend are just walking around and just being teenage girls you know not not being giddy being the that age where you kind of like you don't want to talk all the time and you're like a little bit annoyed and a little bit stressed and you don't want to share everything with the other person i think it it does so much so well that when the real life kind of kicks in it it feels like it earns it for me because it showed so many other aspects of her personality also yeah agreed also, the mom is played by Sharon Van Etten, who is an amazing musician that everyone should check out. I don't know if she sang in the soundtrack. I feel like she should have if she was cast in this movie, but little little Easter egg for uh, for music fans. Nice. <laughs> well, Stephen, uh, should we get to verdicts for this film? Sure. All right. If you were going to give this film a never, a rarely, a sometimes, or an always, what would you give it? Uh, I'm, I'm giving this always, which is translatable to a must see. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing a must see based on like must see is the qualitative statement. If I'm taking it literally, there has to be a caveat in recommending this movie because it it is not always easy. Like it it is a very direct film. About ten or fifteen minutes in, you will already know the tone that it has as we kind of watch her go through her life um, in mostly real time. I, I think you will know rather early if this is the the kind of movie that you are ready for or if it's just like a little too sad and real. But I'm not giving it a recommend with caveat. I'm giving it a must-see because I think even when it is like a difficult thing to sit through, I think what it's doing is important. And I think it it has enough truth and integrity in the way that it tells her story and in the way that it kind of depicts what this situation would be like that i think it's it, it's a good thing to sit through and i think it is very beautiful and it, it does create art out of a message while also hammering its message home so i i think it totally accomplishes what it wants to do implicit caveat is that there is a very good chance that a lot of people will not enjoy this movie <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I'll I'll give it a must see as well, Stephen. Um, I think that you can enjoy it from how it's presenting its material. Like, yes, it's not a fun, you know, you know, counter to the the trailer audio. <laughs> the music sort of plays it like it's a feel good comedy. Um, mm-hmm. It it just feels like any other in- indie movie that we'd be talking about. Um, but it is a serious film. But I think that um, 
minus some of the characters at the beginning of the film, this film is incredibly subtle and really hones in on what it feels like to be in her position as opposed to what the story dictates her position should be. Um, mm -hmm. And for that, I really think it should be celebrated and should be viewed by a lot of people. Um, and there's nothing else you got going on right now. <laughs> Just yep. hop on iTunes and rent that. <laughs> it is a really good rental to like a movie to watch at night in your living room. I think it's a good, it has that kind of, slow subtle vibe that i think can be really good for the contemplative at home experience like for me being at home it's kind of like an airplane movie too where i can really key in on a movie and i've been sitting all day so it isn't like i'm exhausted from anything um so yeah i i think it's actually pretty fortuitous that this is a movie that came out during a period that everyone is at home looking for things to rent because i think it'll get the attention that maybe yeah. would be harder to get if it was just one movie competing against 20 others in the theater and it also came out at a at a period when many states are trying to call abortion a non-essential non -essential surgery. surgery yeah so it's watch the film think about what your state's doing and uh maybe call some people all right. Well, that's going to do it for this review of Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. <laughs> Stephen Miller, people want to find you throughout the week. Where can they do that? Uh, people can find me at twitter.com slash sdavidmiller or sdavidmiller.com. People can find me at christopherinreallife.com or twitter.com slash christopherirl. You can find the podcast over at thespoilerwarning.com where you can get a bunch of the back episodes of the show. If you want to subscribe to the show, you can do so over on Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcasts are found. If you want to know when the episodes go live, you can follow us at twitter.com slash spoilerwarning, facebook.com slash thespoilerwarning, or instagram.com slash thespoilerwarning. If you want to get a hold of us directly, you can send an email to fans at thespoilerwarning.com, or you can use the contact form on our site. Music for this episode will hopefully come from the soundtrack to uh, this film. Um, if not, it may come from the credits to this film. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is this review. We have one more review coming at you this week, and that'll be for a little film called The Other Lamb. Um, so we're going to go head off and record that. Talk to you later. Bye.